Yes, I got it. All right. So um, I know that it was the advertising, whatever, but my name is Adam Carter. I am the head football coach at Grayson High School. Um, right, We're right outside Atlanta. I was telling Coach a minute ago, we have 3,100 kids here, um, which is a real, it's the largest classification in the state of Georgia. So big place. Um, we're running at about 160 kids on our football team right now, nine through 12. So relatively big. Um, that's my contact information on there. If you need to send me an email, uh, that's my Twitter. Um, so if you want anything, guys, um, feel free to ask me. Um, this is a clinic that I did in Nashville a couple weeks ago for, or a couple months ago, really, I guess, for Glacier. Um, and it kind of just describes our stuff. And I have it split up. So I'm actually going to show you four different presentations in this, you know, 60 to 90 minutes um, of going through it. And it kind of breaks down our stuff from the front all the way to the back end and, and even some game plan and stuff if we have time to get there. Um, you'll see the, the, the hashtag compete thing come up on my stuff a lot if you follow me or you follow Grayson football. That's kind of our, our mantra is what we do. Um, and so that's something that we kind of live by. Um, my M fell off, fell off in my in my speed room, so I'd take mine and go put it up there for the kids out here. But anyway, um, everybody's got their own philosophy. I, I'll go ahead and put this in a nutshell. I know some of you will take pictures of it and stuff like that. But for us, it's it's uh, one of those deals to where our whole philosophy is we're going to be gap sound. Um, we're going to play very fast. And we want to actually um, be very physical once we make contact. Um, you know, I think that in high school football, um, if you can get really good high school football players or high school age players in, in your situation and your clubs over there, um, if they will, if they'll do what you ask them to do and they'll do it as fast as they can and they will do it in a physical manner when they get there, I think you have a chance to be pretty good on defense. Scheme wise, it's just whatever you're comfortable with. I really do believe that the, there's not much difference when you start talking about scheme. It's all about fits and how people play stuff. But the most important thing behind my philosophy is, is, is I understand how to fix stuff. Um, and I think that's what you got to look at. You can't go in and, and say, hey, I'm going to run this stuff because coach does. You got to be able to fix it. Um, and I think that's really important. Um, so make sure – I do think this is a big one. Uh, we're going to we're going to devote six to the box somehow um, all the time. If you start bringing guys to the box, I'm going to bring guys to the box. Um, we're trying to create negative plays. I think you can do that in a couple of different ways. One's whether it's from a zone pressure system or a, um, or a, uh, a man pressure system, or if it's the way you play your D-line, and I'll talk about that here in a minute. Um, but tackle the football, pursuit drills, I think that's something you need to do um, regardless of what age it is, is teach kids to run to the ball. Um, and, and I think that, that you're starting to get in the right direction. But, again, my philosophy is just going to be to play good defense, hopefully. Um, you know, we talk about, you know, your attitude, what's going on every day or what gets you going every day. Um, I think that's important. Um, you know, what I tell our kids, like what makes your feet hit the bed uh, or hit the floor. And so I think that's important, um, you know, for especially our guys, they, they go to school all day, they lift every day, then they got to go to practice in the 90 some degree heat. So, um, you know, what gets them going. All right, now, defensive line play. So, we are a four-point stance. So, if you can picture right now almost being in a, in a power clean stance with your feet, squat down with your forearms down on your thigh board, all right, and then put your hands down to the ground. And the reason why we're a four-point, one is because it's balanced and we move a lot of different directions. Um, and we read offensive linemen. And so I think it allows us an opportunity to go either direction based on what my read tells me. Um, if you're a three-point stance, I got a defensive end that really – his natural is to go to three-point stance and to really cock his inside foot back. And essentially what he does, he steps under himself every time. Uh, and he, all he does is gets back to square. So we're working on that. Um, but that's our initial stance. We attack the tackle. Um, you'll hear, Coach, um, we're going to attack the breastplate. Um, inside or the outside shoulder. If I'm a five technique, we'll talk about te techniques in a minute, but if I'm a five technique, I'm going to attack the tackles inside shoulder and is uh, really try to get our hand on his hip if I can to control the man. Um, but that's really important. You'll hear us talk about for our kids that we want our hands and our hips to bring their feet. We don't want their feet to step first. Um, typically what happens, they step under each other to get up field. We're more worried about the punch. Um, so that's really important for us. So in our five technique, um, 
we're going to be a tight five right outside shade of a tackle, and we're taking a six-inch power step right to um, the crotch of the offensive lineman, which is going to be our offensive tackle. Um, now, with our slant technique, and you'll see this in a minute, and we do it a good bit, is – we're going to do the same six inch power step, but we're going to open up our inside foot at a 45 degree angle. So as the steps the same, it's just the front foot's going to turn to a 45 and that's to get my hips open. We're going to take the inside, inside elbow and we're going to crank it like you're cranking a lawnmower. And what that does is that gets my hips and my shoulders turned. Um, and you think about zone blocking teams from an offense perspective is that offensive tackle steps down on a slanter and he's really trying to get to the middle of their breastplate and their outside hip. Well, when I turn and I turn and I crank that inside shoulder and I don't give him that, that surface area right there to punch. We also tell him on our slant technique is we read the guard. If the guard steps to me, I get vertical, he steps away, I chase it. Long stick for us is, uh, is now it's the same technique as a slant. The only difference is if the guard was to turn to us instead of getting vertical, we would cross his face. Our jet is our 505 we go when we try to go get them. We are a read team. Um, we will we will read and, and gap exchange stuff. So we'll squeeze and spill. Um, some of you may say a hip technique, meaning if the tackle blocks down, I got to take the hip. Um, but again, it's all about that power step, um, no fault steps, and being able to stay square. Now, I don't want him to squeeze the man all the way across the dang line of scrimmage or across the football, rather. I want him to punch and get a really good punch on my squeeze and then go make plays. Um, do, uh, double team, we call it toilet seat. So we always have a read key and a pressure key. If my read key comes to me, that's where I put my hands. If I feel my pressure key come down on me, whether it's a tight end or whether it's a four eye and I'm getting a tackle down, then we toilet seat and we turn our butt to the double and we try to split it. So we'll actually almost take a knee, get skinny, and then try to split it. All right, and this is something our D-line coach does. Uh, he calls it ABCs. So his A, the A of the ABCs is agility. Um, working on their ability to move their feet um, and their get off. All right, so that's part of their agility, just bag drills, um, different ways of changing direction for those guys. Um, blow delivery is something, again, that we're going to spend a ton of time on. Whether you got a sled, a leverage sled, um, if you're having to punch a kid holding a bag or whatever, um, that, that's really important. Violent hands, right? And so, again, we're going to screw our feet into the ground, right? And we're going to use that leverage to punch through our man. Um, and so shaded techniques, we will a shade to us is, is teaching a five or teaching a shade by our nose. Um, and it'll, I'll show you what it looks like in a second. But head up technique is a four or zero for us. And we don't do a ton of fours anymore. We will do some. Um, but if you look, it talks about elbows in, thumbs up, is probably the most important thing. And when you're punching, essentially you're thinking about close grip benches. That's where my elbows are really tight to my ribs, and that's where my punch is. Um, we just want their thumbs up. We don't want the thumbs out because the thumb hits first and hits the body. That's when you start having thumb injuries and all that stuff. You want your thumb up and use that pad of your actual um, hand to actually be your, your strike. Um, we also do some stuff to where we'll put that guy down, put him against a wall or something where, that won't move with his outside foot. Screw that in the ground um, so it's like it's in concrete. And then I'll take somebody, either a, a bag when I'm holding it or whether it's a person, and try to block down on it or block out on it. it's a base block and he's got to really put that foot in the ground and really punch with just that six inch step and not worry about that outside foot that outside foot is in the ground and then contact so we got to be able to tackle um we're going to teach i think the way you teach tackling is important i think the way you teach tackling for a defensive lineman is different than what you teach a linebacker um they rarely are going to get a a iso type look where it's me and a running back in a small hole right there typically what they're getting is they're getting the ball bounces outside, they're running flatter. They're getting something for our defense where we slant and we're chasing something down the backside. So you got to work that. Now, you may not want to work the, the hawk tackle versus a, a person. So the rings or a dummy where the person um, dragging the dummy behind them. Um, and that all that stuff's important. The way we teach that is eyes through thighs, wrap and squeeze, and then drive for five to run their feet. Um, a one-arm tackle. I know that sounds crazy to actually think about teaching it, but – Typically, when a defensive lineman is getting blocked, that's when, you know, they're going to make tackles getting blocked. They very rarely come free um, just by themselves. So that's that's something you do. Working on your block destruction and then making tackle. Um, the squeeze and chase is kind of what I was talking about earlier. So what we'll do is we'll have an end as far as tackle. 
and we'll give them a tackle look right there and a running back, right? And we'll squeeze the tackle and we'll chase, and then we'll make the tackle at this angle right there. Again, it's a hawk tackle. So um, different ways to do things. Uh, make it as game-like as possible. Make it the tempo and everything as game-like as possible as well. And then a turnover circuit. If you're not doing a turn or takeaway circuit, um, that's something you would want to implement. Here's our, our front. So um, I probably should have did a screen, but I'll draw it real quick. So just so we're all on the same page, and I know most of us are, but our a five technique for us is outside of the tackle. Our zero technique is head up. The five technique is outside the tackle. So everything starts from there. That's our Rams call, right? And that's just a, a five zero five is what we play most of the time with stack backers right behind them. We'll get into that later. But um, out of that, we'll go to our horns look, which just is a slant. And, and that's all depending on where you want to slant. Um, and you can slant to a back, away from a back. You can sl slant to the field, to the boundary. You can slant to a sniffer, to a tight end, whatever you want to do. Um, it's just a different way to do it. We do give them a jet call every once in a while. It tells them they can get the pass runner steps and pin the ear back. Four zero four, we will line up head up on the tackles. All right, that one has been good to us the last couple of years. And then eyes is something that I want to go to this year, which I'm going to put my inside eye or my outside eye rather on his inside eye. So I will be a four eye here. Now, when I get into four eye, you'll hear people do it different ways. Some people play back into the tackle. We read the guard. So as far as my alignments go and where my eyes are, um, I think that's probably the most important thing is one, getting lined up and where you're looking. But make sure that the way we teach it is I'm reading the offensive alignment to my inside. Um, so in Rams, I'm reading the tackle. In eyes, I'm reading the guard. We will shade our front sometimes. We'll go a five, um, a shade and a four eye. If you watch any kind of Iowa State stuff, that's what you'll see. You'll see a four eye a lot to their deep back. And what that does is that helps cut off B gap. Um, for some of you, um, if you know what I'm talking about with those. I'll show you video and I'm going to show you fronts and all that stuff. Anyway, I'm just kind of going over it. Tight is our five shade four eye with a pony coming off. Tiger is five zero five with a pony going off. So same rules and we can check it. Um, well, I typically do this versus um, 20 and 21 right here. So 20 and 21 personnel. Um, smash, wash, check. I do a ton of stuff on check with our outside linebackers and who's blitzing and why they're blitzing and where they're going um, to, to get us into different looks. We'll do a lot of this stuff from depth. Um, it's just one of the stat backers that are going to be off the edge. Um, and, uh, and, and we'll slant everybody away from them. But again, I'm gonna show you that stuff. I'm trying to go relatively fast. So that's our Rams front again, five zero five. Now, you will see on film, guys, that we will play a true stack at times, and then I'll remove him at times. Um, and, and we have we have two different packages, but it's the same personnel. It's still three three personnel. It's just the way we do things. Um, but typically, I'm gonna be stacked. Um, but five zero five, I'm reading off. I'm reading the offensive lineman to my inside. I'm playing a stuff technique on the center. I'm reading a five technique. Stuff technique. I'm trying to take the center, and put him right back where it came from. He can lose. So if you get inside zone here, he can lose backside. If he does lose backside, he just can't get gapped out there. And what that does on the stuff is that gives your mic time to go. Um, with him being stacked, their double team is going to work there to there. So that gives your mic some freedom if you can really stuff that guy and lag the nose back. Um, on our horns call, we'll either slant to the tight end or we can slant or to the back, or we can slant away from the back. And all that just depends on game plan week to week and or, or who's who do we want to have the ball, right? I think that's something you gotta think about is who you got the ball. Remember, our slant technique is a 45 degree step with our first foot. All right, and I'm ripping the inside elbow back like I'm cranking a lawnmower. My shoulders get turned, right? Now, if he blocks to me, I get vertical. If he blocks down, I run off his butt, and I'm chasing the dive. Now, what typically happens is they read the nose, right? The nose goes here, so it pushes him back this side, all right? So, again, you should be relatively good if this guy will cut off the gap. Now, one thing I didn't mention is we ask our guys to play through the heels of the offensive lineman. I don't want to play here. 
right, I want to play here um, in order to give us a couple of things. One, it sometimes when we get pullers, you'll see in a minute, I play on the opposite line of scrimmage. I get in pullers way and I take up the, the puller. My backers run free. Um, and I want to be aggressive. I, I don't want to, I don't want to our kids to be playing catch. I want them to, to know where they're going and get there fast and do it aggressively. There's your heads look if you want to get into your heads. That's 404. Eyes, I really like this, especially if you want to do some of the Iowa State three high stuff because you can remove both stack backers. And now what you've done is I got B, I got B, A and A. Everything pushes outside. Um, so you're allowed to walk those guys out a little bit. Um, and there's different reasons you want to do that. If you get trips and you want to remove a stack out here, Right. Well, then you got to take away B gap. So you can either pinch him or you can call him a four eye, whatever you want to do, but you got to take away B gap. So there, it gives you some different options. All right. So here we go. Um, here's your eyes front, kind of show you from the back. Um, again, this was the one I was telling you about. I couldn't, it took me forever to get him fixed right there, and I'm still working on it. Um, but he wants it, he's six four, so he's really long. He wants that front foot caught way back. And his step is really normally is right under itself. You see that right under itself. He didn't even gain ground, right? So what we want to be is we want to be square, right? And we want to gain ground. Again, we're reading the inside offensive lineman. He's down, right? Or my here, he's down. So that was my read key. That's my pressure key. My read key goes down. I'm stepping to him. If I feel pressure right here, I'm going to take that inside arm and I'm going to rip through to try to get vertical. What that does, that helps me take on get in the way of pullers, and it prevents me from getting washed. All right, on the back side, this offensive end saw his guard pull. We want to try to chase that as much as we can. Now, it doesn't work relatively well if your nose gets whipped by the double team, right? So that's what I was talking about, toilet seat. He should have turned his butt right here to the pressure key and stayed in that gap. Now, he would have took both of those, and we run flat. Now – the next part of that is he never crosses the line of scrimmage. If you look, because his first step is so bad and so flat, he stays on our side of the line of scrimmage the whole time. Now, he's awfully far back. Why, I'm not sure, right? But he never crosses the line of scrimmage. So that's why he gets in that mess right there, right? This defensive end does a good job. I'll show you why we do it. When he gets vertical right there, he ends up taking on the puller. So now you got a Mike feeling A to scrape. You got the defensive end. He's way too high though, way too high, right? You got a defensive end and B. The ball has to bounce. If he fills his gap, the ball has to bounce. Our whole deal: make the ball go to the sideline. Now you see five try to get out of there. He's got to stay, all right. And six, it's just got to sit it down. If six will just sit it down right there, we'll be fine, all right. He tried to cut back in, but that's your stack backer folding over on the backside. Same deal, same call, different way of doing it. So now what they're going to start doing to you here in the States is when I get a four eye, they will arc us and read that guy. All right, all he's got to do is just treat it the same, right? I'm a guard reader. That doesn't matter. So he should slam this gap down. You should not see this. You see where his eyes are in the backfield instead of there. If his eyes are on the guard, you would see him slam the gap down and he is a dive player. And what that does is that's going to let the mic be able to fold back. And we can talk about that technique in a little bit. But um, we're taking on the double. If you look, if he slams it down, he's got dive over here to this side. He is in B gap. That's my double team. Sit it down. And now you've got a ball going outside, right? Here's the problem. He was in B, which he was supposed to be. And then he got to A. Well, now i got a problem. So he's got to stay his butt there and not let that double team come off. Now, it did bounce outside to one of our ponies and the way we play this stuff, and then we'll get all that run fits in the back half, but he, he bounces outside to a pony that's unblocked. Now, this was 2018 with a totally different school that I was at. Um, we still did a lot of the same stuff. This is it versus a 21 personnel team. Now, typically what we'll do is if you're going to get big like this and play with attaches, we'll get back in a five typically. Um, but we didn't here. 
if you're if you play with a bunch in the states, if y'all start looking at this stuff, um, you'll hear people call this a tight front or a mint front with these four eyes, even out of a three fours. What most people have made it, um, Kirby and, and Coach uh, Saving and stuff like that made it very popular. But you're going to get this. You're going to get a uh, across uh, an X block or a gut block. You're going to get this where he's out and folds. Right, so what we tell them is if that guy comes to me right there, tackle pulls across his face. Um, and that's something you got to really practice. But he gets an out block, stat backer sees it. So now essentially what's happened is he went to C and he went to B. Right, so again, we're still pretty good. Mike is A. Now you watch our nose right here fighting. See, he doesn't come off the center. Our nose does not come off the center. The double has to worry about him. He still does not let go, all right? And what it does is it allows 13 to kind of run, right? And 13 runs through and actually makes the tackle from the backside. You see 98 right here. He steps to the guard and then crosses it because he sees it. So, again, now we're able to take away gaps interior. I think it's one more right here. We really like the four-eye front. Um, because of what our, our philosophy is to make the ball go outside. So now you see his head inside. Again, he should be down on the hip, though. And if he's down on the hip, that makes him bounce, and that makes us be able to get over the top. With that space right now, 42's got to fill it, so I don't really like that very much. But the tackle doesn't block the four eye. He should make the tackle on inside zone every time. Your nose is too high. That's why he gets washed. All right, versus pass. Versus quick game, they're not really going to be able to get out of it. Um, but if they go to attack B and they get high set on the pass, they can work their pass move to get back into a contained rush. Or – they can just try to win through B gap. All right, so there's a couple of different options. You see this in right here. He got high hat. He was in a four eye, so he jumps back to his five. This end doesn't. Okay, so sometimes they'll do it, sometimes they won't. Right, taught by the same dude. All right, there's your Oki front that I was telling you about. So we'll put a four eye to the back. Now we can shade and have him actually shaded, or we can slant to a shade, right? So if you look at it, if we go ahead and shade him, all it is is our horns call. We just go ahead and line up there, okay? So again, we can shade him, Oki push, or we can just line him up and slant. All right, so now we set the four out to the back. This is a um, – the fit's kind of interesting right here, but if you think about it, he's four eye. It's, you're only teaching that technique. So if I'm a – let me st stop for a second. Go through and have a list of what you're actually teaching your kids by position and write it down. And if it looks like you're doing too much, you probably are. Um, because one, you got to be able to practice everything. So for us, he's got to learn a five, a four eye, and how to slant to it. That's his three techniques, essentially, right? And so I think that's really important. All right, now, but if you look right here, 43, the difference is, is he's supposed to go attack. Um, again, never crosses the line of scrimmage. Now, he sees the puller like he's supposed to. But he should be in the hip pocket chasing those guys. And if he's in the hip pocket chasing those guys, he makes a tackle for loss. Not really sure why. Again, same kid I was telling you a minute ago, we can never just get him to go. Uh, now, he's back this year, so hopefully we're able to do that. But um, now we're going to dent this most of the time. I don't know how you guys teach your, your ends to spill, but we're going to call it, call it a dent, which means when that puller comes, He's going to take it on fat. He's not just going to dip and rip inside. He's going to take it on fat and try to put him right back where he came from just with his head in that gap. So we don't want to try to avoid him. We're trying to run right through him. 
43 ends up making the tackle, which, you know, I told you is a weird fit. Here's a look from the back. Again, if he were just attacked here, he makes the tackle for loss. You don't want his head there. You want his head there. So take it on right down the inside half of him, put your head right there, and you'll be fine. We don't really get a squeeze if you look. That's just a hand pat on the back. So that's something we're working on every day. He's worried more worried about a puller coming in the back or the back than he is actually helping his Mike linebacker. But ends up being okay fit for you. There it is again. Five. You should get a um, a slant to it. So now we do a bunch of this stuff. I don't know if you guys do in Germany yet, but we call it move two. We'll line up in one front and move to a different one pre-snap. Um, you get a lot of mileage out of that without actually uh, – it with not a ton of practice time, which is ultimately a really good thing. So now if you see it, he was slanting, right, four eyes, all right, five. So now he should be attacking that hip right there and cutting off everything on the backside, which he does. All right, and when he gets vertical, I'll show you this angle. When he gets vertical, watch what it makes the back do. It makes the back make his cut early, right? So when he gets inside and gets vertical now, the back was aiming to the A-gap. He's reading the nose, the nose went away, so he's trying to press there. Well, when your DN gets inside and gets vertical right there, now the ball has to bounce before they want it to. Okay, so again, really good right there about pushing vertical. Now it bounced right to one of your stack backers, okay, which is, uh, you know, that kid right there broke the school single season tackle record this year. Good job right there on the wrap, squeeze, see both hands squeeze to him, wrap and roll, okay. So again, that stuff should play a role in most of the stuff we do. I got a question. I, I'm, I like to go ahead and answer them. So, uh, you know, our, our deal coaches, I want to give, I want to give them as many looks as I can um, and still be able to, to manipulate where, you know, who's going to get the ball. So in your zone read stuff on who's going to get the ball um, quarterback or running back that plays a part in it. Um, it helps out if you need to remove from a stack perspective to get to a um, to get a removed linebacker out of there. Um, but my biggest thing is to give these kids right here as many looks as possible. Um, I don't want them to know which technique they're going to see right before the ball snap. That's why I do a ton of move too. So if I think that playing four techniques and four eyes is the way to go, I'm not just going to line up there. Um, one of the other things is um, probably one of the biggest reasons is, is we are not very heavy. That's 190 pounds right there, and that was about 215 right there. Man, maybe 220. But we're not very heavy. So if I just line up in fours and four eyes the whole time, I'm going to get mashed. If I move to it, it helps me out a ton. But to be able to give a, a different look, most snaps, um, whether – and again, out of our Oki front, all that is is our horns call. We're just lined up in it for the most part. And so um, it gives them a, a different uh, visual, right, uh, your offensive tackles. I'm not worried about making this guy all right, uncomfortable where, where I'm going as far as my movement goes. I want to make these 15, 16-year-old kids right there uncomfortable about where he's going to be when the ball snaps. Hope that gave you. Now, as far as – schematics and and what you're actually going to get and all that stuff I think that's a game plan of what everybody does to you um as far as what they're actually trying to do from a run game perspective and how you can take it away if it's a ton of pullers if it's a ton of pullers I like that you know you you'd probably rather be a five technique because now I can squeeze the tackle and take on pullers where if I'm a four eye and I'm getting a ton of pullers I'm probably going to get blocked down by the tackle and now the puller is going to actually get to the backer so you know, I think it's just a matter of what you see. There it is again. So you should get shade, four eye, five. Shade to the back. 
or four eye to the back rather. Now what that does is that goes ahead and with the shade and inside zone pushes him here, right? The four eye, the tackle decides to come to the four eye. Now your mic is running free. That typically doesn't happen. Typically this guy right here reaches up and now he's flat. And that's when we tell our mic linebacker, now you're my lag player. If I'm pushing a nose away, the mic's the lag most of the time. Not all the time, most of the time. Now, if he tries to run front side, there you go. Now, on this fold block, he's supposed to be uh, squeezing and punching the tackle. If he were to attack the tackle and this guy comes at him, cross him. Because we have a stack sitting out here. Sorry, my draw was terrible. The mouse pad got away from me. It's not a bad job by the nose, though. Stay in your gap, make your play, right? Stay in your gap, make your play. Same thing. Back was to me. I'm reading the back. That means I'm getting to the guard's hip, right? And then I try to get vertical. So when I get to the guard's hip and get vertical or the, the tackle blocked down on me, but he was able to get vertical and change the line of scrimmage. So now that causes that. I got a lag here, and I would have a stack folding. All right? Hopefully that makes sense. I think we had another one. Nope, that was it. Sorry. All right. Down here on the red zone. So now this cat is the dive player. So you kind of see how we gap exchange it right here a little bit. So he is a B gap. If I'm B gap, I am dive. So he's there. And now he steps here. So this is what I was telling you about. They're going to arc you. All right, they're going to arc you. And that guy's going to try to get to your mic. Now, what we did was we shaded him there. All right, and it was just because of where your trips were. All right, versus the wide trips, we actually 30 him up. Typically, we have him in a 10 and a 40. All right, but we were able to – we shaded him a little bit right there. If you got good, if you got kids that have a really good get off, and you we call this a mesh charge, and you can charge the mesh right there, it makes quarterback's life miserable. But you see what I got? Dive quarterback. All right, and by having that mic lag back, we also we got a couple of different looks, coaches. Um, I won't go into a ton of it, but we base off how our linebackers are, are flowing based on where he is. Right, so I can get into that in a different time, but all right. I was telling you a minute ago our move calls, our move two calls. We're gonna get into that fit. If you're not doing that, I'm telling you, it'll definitely help you. I don't care if you're a three man front or four man front, it doesn't matter. Um, it is difficult to prepare for. Again, you're affecting the play call and the scheme versus zone blocking because you're making fifteen to sixteen old kids right before the ball snap have to talk through it and and work through it, right? And so you've been able to help yourself and give them some kind of doubt but really without doing anything. Um, that's kind of the main part right there. Simple in theory, but cloudy presentation. Um, compliments are third down package because what I'll do is I'll get into some of this move to stuff and then run pressure behind it. Um, but it's something you got to do. You got to practice it. You got to do it. Um, and then, we'll, you know, again, we tell them move to eyes. Mike gives the move call. Um, or move to Oki or move to Rams, starting four eyes. So there's all kind of stuff we can do. Um, what I encourage you to do is to watch, get a coach that watches the quarterback's timing of the snap. It may be your play clock. It may be um, his hand. It may be a knee. It may be he goes to his mouth. It may be uh, – I don't – it could be the center popping his head up. Find that. And then that's what you can base a lot of your stuff on as far as your um, – as far as your presentation, as far as um, when you tell your guys to move. Now, again, we move a bunch. So there it is. He goes move. So we get now in a four eye again. And what that does is just causes a little bit of doubt in this tackle's mind about where he's going to be. That's it. So they went ahead and gap exchange pre-snap. And it's not much. It's very subtle. It don't have to be much. Just move. Be subtle with it. Tell them to keep their hand, get to get, get back on the ground as quick as they can. All right, this one's a really good one out of eyes. So, again, you move to it. You're a quicker football team. I'm on the back side of some of this stuff. Um, 
typically your backside guy makes a good number of plays if he's any if he's pretty good and he's got a good first step. So we we already had we showed it too early, kind of got back into it. And then again, run flat, chase the guard, dive quarterback. So again, hopefully that helped. All right, I'm gonna go to anybody got anything on that front wise. If not, I will go to our um, our pressure stuff, and then I'll go to the coverage after the pressure. Good, coach. Yeah, we're good. We we don't have any questions. I think you you break down everything on a re very clear point. So five and six man, four man has not been a big part of what we do. I know if you're a three four, typically teams bring at least one of those outside backers a bunch. We have that package, but most of the most of the time, if we're pressuring, it's five and six man. Um, I, there wasn't a game in the last two years that I sent pressure more than twenty percent of the time. I think when you start thinking about the three three um, from years past, it's been. Um, you know, how much pressure can I send and where can I send everybody from and all that stuff. And we're not that. We're, we're more of a gap sound team that lines up and plays football. Um, we will zone pressure and man pressure. Um, we have opportunities to run our pressure. We've actually added one too. But we're able to run our, our five-man stuff or our six or five-man stuff, rather, with a middle of the field close, which fits our scheme. Um, again, that's what we're trying to do. Our cover zero stuff um, is our – we have one call for that, or you can add a tag to any of your five-man stuff. Um, very simple concepts. Uh, we have the ability to send nine different guys, if you think about it. I can send the, either one of the ponies, I can send the free, or I can send any six in the box. Um, so we have that ability, and there is that threat of that at any time. Um, we just don't go to it very much. But you have to be willing to do it. Um, and that's something that I, I've worked on. I'm a pretty conservative dude. But you got to be willing to do it. Um, one, for the team you're playing, they got to have something to practice, right? You got to make sure they know that you'll bring it from anywhere. Um, we attach pre, post, snap, front movement with most calls. Again, I was telling you, we'll, we'll move the front and then bring the pressure. We are a formation pressure check team. Um, we're also a field boundary check team. So you'll hear some people like I just did a, a podcast with Nick Davis from, um, from Rose Holman. It's a three, three guy does a really good job, bright young guy. And he, they have a word for everything. Um, it may, I don't know. I think one of their systems is like fish or something. So they may, their field pressure, um, is tagged with an F and they're coming from that way. Well, we may, ours may be hey, we're going to come to a deep back. Or it may become, hey, we're going to come away from attached tight end. Or we're going to go to the way uh, to attached tight end. So our stuff is essentially based on pressure checks um, for your formation. Simulated stuff, um, I think that's probably a big word you've heard for, for American football is this simulated pressure stuff. But here's what I tell you on this stuff. Have ways to simulate that you're coming from certain spots and bring them or have ways to simulate – that you're coming from certain spots and get them out. Essentially, that's what you're doing. Out of a three-man, you have no need to drop a defensive end. So it's a little different than some of the stuff you're seeing probably on Twitter and all that stuff. Um, but we want to be able to, to show we're coming one way, come from another side. We want to be able to show we're coming and actually come with those guys. We want to be able to show all threes coming and either come or get out or send three or send four, send five, send six. So was, was showing all of them. We do have a package where they're all walked up. Um, or, just, you know, like I said, or we can just show the mic. Five mans. This is relatively easy stuff. Everybody, in a, you know, that runs 3-3 three, three run these two blitzes. We just call it bib and bob. means both backers outside, both backers inside. That's relatively easy. Chris and Cross, the inside linebacker goes first through B. The outside linebacker goes second through A. You're if you are a, any type of pressure like this, you have to have – I guess you don't have to, but I encourage you to – to have a go guy and a read guy. So whatever one of these guys is going first. So in Chris, your mic, your mic's your go guy, your stack's your read. In Cross, your stack's your go and your mic's your read. So if they read pullers, they read run away from where your pressure's come, they can read out. 
showers, your NCAA blitz that everybody has seen where we slant a defensive end and bring two off edge. Um, and we do that a different way. Um, and I'll show you that. So there's Bob. Now, we will send him either way we want. So the mic in our man coverage would have a back and our hot coverage is three over three under, and they would just drop off three and he would become a dot. All right. And so now we're going to do some stuff to where the ends may pinch, the ends may um, read the defensive ends, right? Or we can do some stuff where we go with an A gap and he reads run or he reads pass and we loop. So we got a couple of different things we can do out of this. I just drew it like this for the clinic. Um, but we got one thing I encourage you to do from a coaching perspective defensively is really identify when your run pass stuff happens. Um, look at your percentages. Let these guys know and, and with your numbers and your huddle breakdown of what's a rundown, what's a pass down. So that I know if I'm blitzing right here, if it's a rundown, I know that he wants to zone read, he's going to pull it. I want to be square at the line of scrimmage and be ready for the run, hit that tackle and be ready for the run. If it's a pass down, let's go, right? So I think that's important. Here's what it looks like as far as game-wise. You see, there goes our movement again. So I went move to eyes, and then I ran our pressure behind it. So they had to see guys starting in a five, moving to four eyes, and then backers coming. So that's part of what our package is. Um, I like this. If I get a stack backer one-on-one -on -one with a running back, I'm okay. Um, I feel pretty confident in it. And you're not sending this pressure all the time, guys. If your main goal is to get sacks, sending five may not be what you got to do. Um, ours is one to make the ball come out to create negative plays. If he throws the ball, two of the three things can happen and they're in the defensive favor. One's the incompletion and two's the interception. Uh, obviously, if he catches the third one, but two of those three are, are positives for us. So I'm trying to, one, change where he thinks his launch point is, right? Make him maybe throw the ball too early. Helps out from a coverage perspective. We're playing straight man here. That Mike linebacker should start closing in on the back because he's got a man. If that back blocks, you should see the Mike add to the pressure. That's called a green dog. So he should, when he read pass, he should have started creeping up. When he see that got engaged, he should have went and added to the pressure. So our five man would have turned into six because of what they do from a pressure package. Now, they actually should have completed the ball, man coverage, and we're too far off. But you kind of get an idea. Again, I'm getting some one-on-one -on -one matchups, and that's all you can ask for. Um, there are not many people in Georgia going to let just people run free. So you got to try to get some matchups that you like. There's a look from the back. Again, there's the move call. You see that? Now, I think you got to work on blitzing with your stacks. If you don't work blitzing with your stacks and you just tell them to go and run the blitz and they don't know how to do it, uh, it's more to it than just running up the field and going, right? You got to actually teach them what you want, the technique. All right, 42 is just a little slow off the edge here. Bill, there's no difference. I would encourage your guys to walk up from the outside and then hit it on the run on the inside now. If you're running an interior pressure, somebody's got to have the quarterback. So what we're doing is, is we're going to tell the defensive end, hey, you got the quarterback here because I got an inside pressure going. So if they do run zone read right here and he goes away and he pulls it, your end is the quarterback, your, your stack backer is the dive. All right, so away from the pressure, here's how we break stuff down from a from – a, um, how we teach these guys. Typically, if the back's to me, I'm a hold player. If the back's away, I'm a fold player. And so, again, right now, we got to know where our back is, how deep is he, what are they typically running out of it. But Mike, I put – send him away from the running back so that Mike could have a better angle on him. If you send him to the running back, the Mike's got this A gap, and if he swings, it just makes his job a little harder. Now, we don't tell our guys to peel. We don't, we don't peel. Here's your bib. This is good because we make the play off the backside right here. 
Um, our end, we went to an eyes look. So they have to know. So I went eyes right here. They have to know the bib's coming. So we're, I've got to work back outside on the snap. And so when that four eye happens and he crosses this tackle's face, kind of jacks your tackle up, and that leaves your stack backer running free on the backside. You see how he worked flat, right? He's coming flat down the line of scrimmage. He ends up taking the tackle, and I'm flat, and I make the tackle on the backside. So all it is is Bib and Bob is going ahead and telling them who's got what on the gap exchange. That's it. But nice little deal right there because we do get vertical and set an edge, and then the ball has to cut up. So nice little deal for us right there. Again, this was two years ago. And like I was telling you, it's not all going to be sacks. But right now, by the time the quarterback got in the top of his drop, we were in his face. And this team right here like to release the back. So we're it's man it's it's one on one matchups across the board. If they're gonna release the back, I got five for their five. Mine should be more athletic and better better players than the offensive lineman is what we look at it right. And that's not always the case. You're gonna run into some dudes that are players, but we should be more athletic. That's why they're playing defense and the offensive lineman ain't. So once I get there, obviously now I gotta make a play. We, they ran trap out of it here, out of your bib call. So now what you got to teach, again, you got to teach this stuff to, to defeat the run. When I work flat right here and become a B-gap player, and he went down, so I come off his butt. Now I'm the spill player. So when he comes to kick, I've got to be inside and underneath him. Um, and so, again, it's more than just drawing on the board and going. Right? You really got to teach it versus the run uh, if you want to be successful at this stuff, okay? Kind of there's a look at it right there. He ends up coming off the butt. The kick out ends up going to the defensive end. So now he's running unblocked to your uh, to the running back. The mic should have sent him away from the back. So now that would have had to happen. That had a double, and he may run through as well. There's your Chris, your inside backer is first, right? He's going to cross the face of your guard. So he's a go guy, and your stack is your read guy or your loop guy, right? And the, what we're going to tell the nose is to turn the center. Okay, he's got to turn him. So you see right here, six gets the guard, crosses his face, and then there's your fit with nine. Right, he becomes your A-gap fit. He ends up unblocked because your nose does a really good job of turning the center. Right, he turns him. Right, so really good job right there by nine. One more time with a Chris one. Now they're stacked back or away or right here to him, right, has him man. So we're getting pressured and they force it. I guess they, they locked us on the back side, which is fine because now I got a stack backer that fits B gap that has nothing but the running back. So again, with the nose went to him over here, that created the double. They turn out on the five, he's got the back, he's unblocked. So it's been a good blitz for us. Now, again, when you start sending pressure, um, we got five, they got five, what it's going to do, or they got six, right? But we get one free. And now you got one-on-one -on -one matchups with a running back versus a stack backer running at his face. Now the quarterback throws the ball early on his back foot, gets you a bad throw across, the very same blitz. This one right here, really like it. I think that um, for, you know, what we tell our mics to do and letting him read out of stuff is really good for us. So he crosses. There goes your mic as far as from a run fit goes. 
Um, I'll show you in the back the way it looks, and then we'll go on to something else. But there it is, right? Now, if they do, you know, run game-wise, he ends up taking him, right? Guard has to block down on him. He gets vertical, so he ends up taking out the puller. So if he does give the ball from a run perspective, we're sitting there. Now, obviously, we got we got to go make tackles. There's your NCAA blitz. That's your shower look. Um, so there's your seven. There's your stick. Now he reads the guard's block. The block's down. He just runs off the butt. If the block, if the guard's to him, he'll cross him. All right. So that's the difference in a short stick and our long stick. But now we can do this out of man, or we can do this out of hot, which is our three over three under. And I'll talk about that on the next one with the coverage part. But um, again, NCAA blitz. We can do it out of. You can do it out of Rams front. You can do it out of a, a head up front. You can do it out of eyes. It doesn't matter. You can do it out of Oki if you want. You know, if you do it out of Oki, he just starts here. Guard comes to me, cross him, nothing changed. There comes my blitz. So, again, you can do it versus in all your fronts, which is good to have. We ran it, again, if you're going to run it, um, you can run it hot or you can run it in man, either one you want. If you look, though, right here, the only reason why we didn't come free is because the mic was not patient enough to let the end go. All right, now we do have a call that tells the mic to go first, but this wasn't it. So he should let the end clear, and then I'm right off, tight right off the hip. Um, he ends up getting there a little early. When he gets there a little early now, he ends up in A, then ends up in B, and I got a guy off the edge. Um, but if he would have hit it with that guard coming down, he'd have been, it would have been a sack, but he wasn't patient enough. That was actually a tackle coming down. A tackle chased the end. Sorry. That was a tackle that chased the end right there. Okay, so if he had been patient, he would have come right off the butt and he had been unblocked. We run this pretty good mount because um, we can do it out of, you know, different formations. It's really good for us. Now, I tell him who's a low guy and who's a high guy. Remember, if he's going to slant here, he's going to read the guard. Guard goes away. I'm chasing the hip. I'm a go guy. I'm the read guy. I'm also a B-gap defender. So I'm quarterback and then dive, dive. Now, we run – there's we ran a little twist game inside, um, but we tried to scare it, which one of our scares is they walk mm -hmm. up. The pressure should have came from here. What we were doing is we were running a defensive game. We are running the pressure here and running a loop stunt on the back side, and we just didn't get the loop. Yeah, we did. He just didn't get wide enough. All right, this one's a sack. So you go move to eyes, move to eyes, and then you bring the same pressure. Give you a little clearer look at it. All right, so move the eyes, still running your NCAA. Nothing really changed. Your end is just reading the guard now. Now, they, again, tackle came off on the back, or the tackle came off on the backer. Your running back had no idea who he was about to block. So that little movement, again, just a small little quick change. You don't have to mess with the OC in the box all the time, but if you can do it with the, those 16, 17-year-olds down on the field, you got a chance. This team's really good. They got a chance to win it right there in 6A this year, this team in the silver. They're probably the most talented team in 6A, to be honest with you. But, again, you got two guys on one back, all right? That's a win. I got a couple more, and then we'll move on. So, again, same thing. I'm going to get a, a guard chasing the slanting defensive end, and then I get one-on-one -on -one right here with a running back. Um, I also get one-on-one -on -one with a tackle on my stack. So, creating some matchups that hopefully we can win. And I think we missed it on this one. Yep, we missed him. 
So you can call everything, man, and it worked out exactly how you want it to, just like this did. The reason why it didn't actually get the, the sack is because we ran around the running back. We teach our guys that if we're trying to pass rush on offensive linemen, we, we, we make a move. If you're trying to pass rush on, on running backs that step up in the pocket, run through their face. All right, we will do this with a little switch call, and all it does is just switch who goes where. Um, and we have another little option as well. And this is the last one. Um, this is the same type call. The only difference is now instead of him getting vertical for contain, he works flat now. If you look, it's just a four-man front, and then I loop a mic for contain. Same blitz at shower. If you look, our, our pressure, our five-man stuff for the most part, especially when anything's sticking, is our weather calls. And it's been really good for us. This was down the goal line. He takes out the, the kicker, all right? The slant gets vertical and takes out the puller. They bounce to a stack back of the sitting there. I think they get in, but you saw the fit. It's just one-on-one -on -one with a stack. We just don't win, right? You got to win a matchup every once in a while. Same. He attacks the inside pad. I'm also a spiller, and I spill it to a, a pony and a free safety. I should be having help as well from the backside backer when he gets pullers. But you see, that's my, that's my pony coming out here right there. Again, yeah, made the ball go side to side. Last one. Same thing. You know, if you're playing some zone read teams, right, and you want the quarterback to pull it, this one's really good. He sees it crashing in. He's going to pull. I know the back will be here, but I'm showing just a visual. And now I'm the looper for the quarterback. If you think that your linebacker can tackle the quarterback, obviously. But he does, they don't block us on the backside. They try to run some split zone stuff. And then they bounce it right to us. So not bad. All right, so this is the one that I think is going to be the most interesting to you guys um, and probably stuff that you may not have seen before. I think a bunch of 3-3 pressures until you start talking about exotic crap is it, a lot the same. But um, – our coverage rules and the way we play stuff is probably what makes us a little different. Um, we have a field and boundary corner, um, or you can just play left and right. If you think that one kid's a better man type coverage guy, probably put him to the boundary. One's a better zone guy, probably put him to the field. Our dog goes to the field. Our rover is our other pony that goes away. So these two guys are called ponies. They do have a, a specific position name, one that helps us out with the um, who's going where. Right, our free safety's got to be a guy. Um, I mean, he's got to be really good. Um, and the reason why is because we do a good bit of stuff with him. He, the free safety, is your middle third guy. He's your alley runner. He's all that stuff. Our corner technique. So we're going to press most of the time. And our press is typically at two yards on the press. Um, and we have a divider rule. It's very simple. We look at leverage at number one. Uh, where he is alignment compared to the numbers, very simple. Um, if we play off, we're a re-step shuffle team, which means when you see us off, you should see our toes pointing to the quarterback. So it's a slight tilt, re-step shuffle, and then run our buddies to the sideline. Um, one, because I want their vision to be, to be able to see the quarterback, um, and I think that that's hard in a back pedal because I think they're going to see number one more. Um, I discipline from the secondary. Like, if you're not – that's the number one reason why you get beat in the secondary um, is when you line up, your eyes are not right. If you're – I tell our kids, don't let your eyes lie to you. If your eyes lie to you, you're in trouble. Um, we will use a press man and, and bail um, and what we call a bail technique, and we have a bait technique. So, bail and bait, we both have that. Our ponies, we're a scooch team. Now, we will play some um, concepts where we're matching number two, so we're scooching that. Man and hot, we're a scooch. Our man foot's back. Um, our match is essentially what we call cover four. Now, again, when you visualize these first couple right here, envision us 
being in our eyes front with our stat backers removed to a rem to remove number twos and not just playing straight cover three and it'll make more sense to you. And yeah, I'm gonna show you. Um, we will also play read coverage, which is palms. If you hear people call it, say palms, which means that guy re is gonna pedal on the snap and read two to one corner, now you're a force player. Or we'll play cloud, which he's a, t a straight drop back on his uh, pedal and read quarterback. Um, so that's what we look like if we're playing our, our three high safety look. Um, that's nothing new. So if we match it, I'm all number one unless he runs a drag. I'm all number two unless he runs a drag. Um, if they run drags, what we end up doing is we end up zoning off. So if I get a hard drag right now, I'm just going to get in my deep third. I'm going to tell him under. He's going to sit underneath. He's going to sit hook curl, and we're just going to play cover three. So what it does for us is it allows us to be in a cover three look and play like cover three if you play a team that's running a lot of crossing routes and all that stuff, or if you're playing a team that's getting a back out a bunch. Um, and we can also play match when it helps us on vertical stuff, right? So um, just kind of a way to get both. Our free safety is our alley runner to both sides. He should be extra. He should be able to run the alley. If he reads pass, he turns and runs. I think this is really good for you guys. If you don't have something from a defense perspective, from coverage, that our area is something all of our kids should know. They should know your alignment. They should know the read that they're looking at. They should know what they're supposed to do on the snap, and they should know what to do versus running pass. If they don't know these things, it's going to be hard for them to play. All right? And so that's something that you hear all kind of stuff, but that's pretty good stuff. Scooch technique. All right, so, Coach, we go, we go two scoops to clear three-step quick game stuff, and then I open their hips with that inside foot back and shuffle. Um, so I go scoop, scoops, clear three-step game, clear run pass, and then shuffle. Once he's made it past linebacker depth on that second scooch, is in my mind I've got to think vertical anyway. And then I'll, I keep my outside leverage, like you're talking about, on my, on my shuffle. Um, it's worked out well for us because what we're able to do is I know my help is inside, so it helps me keep that outside leverage because um, it goes ahead and gets my hips open. Our alignment versus a remove number two is typically one by eight outside in match anyway. Um, but we go scooch, scooch, and then we pedal. I mean, then we uh, shuffle, not pedal. Um your corner alignment, there's your it's one by six. We've already talked about that. So that's kind of what it would look like if you use your that ask uh, the area alignment read execution assignment. So I have that for every position. Um, if I got a, one of my ponies, if you got to remove number two, you're one by eight outside. If you have a attached two by seven, if there's nobody, we typically walk them down. Free safety, eight yards, don't leave the goalpost. He's reading a quarterback or number three. So if, they're, if the running back took off vertical down the middle of the field, he would have him. If he does get um, ball in belly, he's just going to hide his feet and wait and don't go till you know type stuff. All right. Stack linebackers are typically our hook curl players or a wall two, however you want to look at it. Um, the only – they – in match, they do have three to the flats um, unless they get an under call. There's your palms. Um, two read is what we call it. Um, alignment stay the same. We're still going to be at eight yards. The only difference is now with those ponies, they're trying to split one and two. But they have a hash rule. Um, and they can't be more than three yards off the hash. Now, the only thing that flips is imagine read coverage is who your force defender is. And match your pony is and, and read your corner is. So, again, should look the exact same. Now, post snap, instead of instead of scooching and matching this, I'm going to backpedal and read two to one. Two goes out at any time. It's probably a little different for you guys right here. If he goes out at any time, the corner's going to come off and drive it. And this pony right here now takes number one. So if they run scissors look, he's got the post route. Now, again, I should be getting that to help me. Um, again, this is our three high stack stuff, so. 
again, there's his his um, area for the corner and palms, dog rover and palms, free and palms. We've talked about most of it. So now this is something we do, um, typically don't talk about, but. We'll call 23 check from the sideline and let the kids depend on what the cover or decide the coverage based on formation. Um, I really like this because sometimes when you play split field coverage, you try to dictate what's going to be to the field, but the formation might not show you that. So we'll take that and we'll let those two safeties play it because at the end of the day, the two safeties and the corner is responsible for one and two. Your free safety is extra. Your stacks are normally responsible for three. So that free safety still can remain extra on both sides of it from an alley defender or to rob either side if it's passed. Nothing should change about the way it looks. Pre-snap, we should look the same. Again, it just depends on what some of the splits are, what formation you get. Um, we'll do a bunch of stuff now. Um, and some of this film I'm going to show you in a minute is from a true stack and some from a three high. This is a check for us, our trap stuff where your corner's getting inside now and, and helping take away quick game, which again, that's a game plan thing. We can cloud it where we funnel a number one instead of reading it, we funnel him. Um, cover six, um, essentially now we'll put a pony down to one side or the other, play a cover three look to the field and play a um, – or a cloud look to the field and then play either cloud or match or cloud or read to the backside. This is typically our cover three, um, which is what we're in most of the time. And then there's your hot coverage. And I've, I've, I've done something on that too here. I think this is important. We have a red zone coverage, um, which what happens is, is now a lot of teams in 3-3, three, three, you, you don't have a ton of options. Um, when you get signed in the red zone, you're looking at cover three or man. And I don't know if either one of them is really good. Cover three is not very good because um, you don't – just the spacing and the vertical seams. I don't know if man's very good because all the crossing routes and screen game you're getting down there now. So I think you got to have another option. Um, I'll show you that. Hot coverage is zone pressure three over three under, and you treat it like match. The only difference is the corners are caught their hot technique on number one, meaning if the quarterback catches the ball now and he turns and looks at one, then we drive one. If he looks away from me, so on the backside corner, I'm cover three. The ponies are matching just like they would normal. The only difference is, is if three comes out fast or three comes across the field slow, we come off. And I have a dot player. One of my non-blitzing linebackers is the dot. Um, so here's some of your coverage part right here. So to the field, this is match. So he's got all number one unless he runs a drag. He's outside leverage of number two. He should have him vertical or out. Down here at the bottom, it looks like they were in read coverage. Here's what I don't like right here. Sorry, I got to move his number away. Is when his guy went away, he should be squeezing here. He don't have a man. He should just be squeezing. He wastes himself right here. All right, I don't like the technique here. He's too high. Scoot, scoot, bam, bam, bam. He went to a pedal. Kind of what you were talking about earlier, Coach. So we went back and work, reworked that. No under call. So now I'm just a hook curl drop. He should be able to help me on this shallow route coming across. My stack backer down here at the bottom works too wide. He should know that if anything breaks out, the corner has it. When this guy disappeared, right, he is just my hook player. He should be protecting his hash. Again, zone dropper, zone turn which he does, he just kind of loses him, right? If you see, I don't really incorporate our mic into the pass coverage. Now, you can add him. So if he's sitting back there like that and hanging out, you can add him to the blitz, um, which we probably should have done right there. 23 check again, it looks like we're matched to the field. All right, it looks like they're playing palms down to the bottom.
All we got to do is make him hold it for a second. We're going to get there. You see our, our mic right here in your coverage, crossing routes, all that stuff right there, he's able to knock them out, right? Knock them out, knock out a crossing route. Up top, again, is your match. And at the bottom is your read coverage. Two disappeared. This guy's too fast out. Pony's way too fast out, and we're too deep, right? We're too deep. So when he gets this, and now there's only one threat, you should have him and him on him. He has three to the flats, right? So if you're going to play palms coverage or read coverage, Stack's got three to the flats. Knocked out the crosser, able to get a sack. On um, in match, coach, they were talking about trying to match. Here's what we went through last year. We didn't get in match coverage. We didn't really get that. Um, in our read coverage, absolutely. Um, but in match, we really didn't. Um, so what we went to is we're just saying, hey, you're all a number one. So you hear people say Meg. Meg is man everywhere he goes. And we just let that pony, if he's out, you got him. If he's vertical, you got him. If he runs a crosser, you just you just zone off and find the next crosser, come from the other side or a, or a back out. So we 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 went back and forth. We worked the crap out of it last year. Um, but I mean, you're playing at eight, and if the way we press stuff so much, um, it's hard for a corner to get back over the top of a number two right there, even on a China call because the way we press bell stuff so much, it's just hard. It's matched at the top, read down here at the bottom. So this safety should have took him. Once he pushed vertical more than five yards, he should have took him. I'm man there. I do got inside and underneath help. My free safety is way too fast, way too deep. Palms there at the bottom. They've already got a tight split right here. So now we just got to let it play out. All right. My stack should have three out. We do not teach this. Really good player, but he has no idea what's going on. He should have pushed, reading the quarterback. Quarterback settled his feet. He should be selling his feet. I'm a hash dropper, right? And then I, I've got a flat defender I've got over the top. We do get an interception down at the bottom. Kind of show you that. Make him throw the whole shot. All right, bait him a little bit. I just don't like him being so far out. He should be here. All right, let me get into true 3-3 three, three stuff. Sorry. All right, so true 3-3 three, three stack. All right, now, again, I told you earlier, we don't play a ton of just straight cover three, um, especially versus two by two. So that's the dog, that's the free, that's the pony. So they're still playing their palms covers to this side. We roll the pony down, all right, to the strong side, whatever you depend on what your strong side is. And we can either play our, our um, read coverage with these three, right, or we can play cover three. Um, and that's going to be a split and a week-to-week -week thing as well. Really like it versus team that get the back out. You see up top, so we are not turning our ponies and asking them to drop to the curl and turn and run because of vision. We're going to kind of pedal out, stay in the curl on our, and on our drop, see the quarterback shoulder turn, and we're going to drive. But if you look, we're just doing it a different way now. Again, I know this is a little different. But if you look, I'm still a three high defense, right? And I've dropped eight. So I got five underneath now, right? And so I've got a lot of grass being covered. It's still covered three concepts. I'm just doing it a different way down here at the bottom.
Same thing down here. Only difference is, is he should have better vision out to the curl. It's the only, that's the only deal. All right, so right here up top, he's playing match on the attached tight end. His tight end blocks. He's finding one to get underneath it. If he'd have found it quicker, he would have picked it. But again, in our cover six call, which some people call cover six, quarter, quarter, half, right? So we're essentially – our cover six is we're going to play sky to the field, which is cover three for the most part, and then let them either play read or match on the backside. Cut number one. All right, should have been a pick right there. All right, there you go versus a, two, a true um, cloud look where we're pedaling. All right, we should funnel number one up top, get more on him. These guys are pushing too wide right now. He's better, but he's pushing too wide. All right, and then last last um, deal right here is I, I thought y'all might want this stuff. This is our trips check. Give you two of them. So box is what we call it. Some people call it mini. It's mantle number one, and it's read coverage with these three. Um, they read – these got X him out. They read three to two over here with these guys. At any point in time, if three comes out, same rules like he was playing palms if he was a corner. So if you treat him like one and two now and teach it like palms, like he was a corner, it's the same thing. Anytime that dude comes out, the pony's going to take it. That dog's going to take it. The free takes the other one. He is inside and underneath everything, okay? Up top on our trips checks, the cool part about being a 23 check team is we can incorporate it on, on multiple coverages. They can decide right here whether they want to play match and get him down or if they want to play read and backpedal. They get to decide that, all right? We don't call that for them. They make that call. Now, if we make the tackle right here, it's third down and 20, right? If we make the tackle right there, it's a three-yard gain. Now they got a long way to go. We do – we don't do a great job of getting it on the ground. But you concept-wise, you kind of get an idea. I'll show you one more. Same thing. Man on number one. Reed right here. So he's got it. So now he's my outside-in guy. He's got to force the ball inside. There's your inside-out guy, and there's your alley runner. So force, inside-out, alley runner. Man on number one. Backside. He did a little trap look, it looks like. Okay. I know I'm running out of time. Let me show you one more. All right. Now, our island call, it looks a little crazy. I know that. And I will remove him a little bit more now because he's my ver – he should be flat foot and reading number three. They're going to play your palms covers. These two and this guy, right, will be your hook curl. The only difference is he's got anything to the flats here. Um, so it's more like a cloud look than anything. So anything breaks outside, he's got it at any point in time. Now to the back side, I won't put this one on there. We will trap a little bit. He shouldn't have turned his shoulders. He should have shuffled. But we will trap a little bit. This was 2018. But he should flat foot read this thing at eight, at eight. All right, and if I get a vertical push of any kind past that linebacker depth, he's got it. But there's a trap down here at the bottom. Look, safety's just got to get off the hash. It's a good job right there by that kid. All right, last time. All right, up top, again, my stack should be out a little bit further to take away that throw off of our alignment, right? Get a little scared look going down here. Like we're bringing five, we drop eight. Up top, you see, again, he was backpedaling more. That was a freshman, good player, but he was still a freshman. And, again, this third round of the playoffs, so he was a little he was a little tight. But he should have just been hot feeding his read. Feet open up, shuffle, and run. Up top, you get a late breaking out route. This ball should have been picked. He dropped it. 
That may have changed the game right there. We may have won the game off of that play, and we lost it. But you see, he's just got anything to the flats. I'm looking to press anything to the curl. I'm not worried about three vertical, and I'm over the top. Cool. So that's really it, Coach, that I got, man. I hope that was what y'all guys wanted. Um, hopefully you got something out of it. If you need anything else, just let me know. Yeah, Coach, it was was really amazing. Uh, I liked uh, all the details you, you put into your put into your defensive system, and um, I really like how you how you are, are able to set up your players to to be success, successful. You you don't do that. Uh, that difficult things, but you do a little tweaks here and there, and uh, and uh, I think that will make your players successful on the field. And I, I really like the ideas, and I noted a lot of things down. And I think we we can definitely implement some of your ideas um, into into our playbook and into up into our game. So. Well, you guys need anything, y'all got my contact information. If y'all follow me on Twitter, send me a message if you ever need anything. Good luck to y'all. Hopefully you get to play. And um, I'm pulling for you guys. And like I said, we're uh, we're definitely here. If you if you ever need anything, just let us know. Yeah, thank you very much, Coach, for your time. I really appreciate you um, helping us uh, grow and educate us on such a high level. So thank you very much for your time. And let's have the fingers crossed that we can play in the fall. No doubt. All right, guys. Good luck to you. Goodbye. Have a nice day. See you.